Welcome back to Christianity A to Z. This is our weekly podcast where we look at some big issues, some big doctrines from the Bible, and we tie them to the letters of the alphabet. And uh, we've uh, we've got all the way to the letter R, and we're going to be thinking about the doctrine of regeneration. And um, as, as you know, if you've listened to these things before, there are uh, lots of other resources you can find on our website, cornerstonechurchkingston.org, and our other um, channels, social media, YouTube, podcast channels. Um, so as ever, I'm here with Ben and with Pete, also Hello. pastors Hello. at the church. Hello. And we are going to be looking at Titus chapter 3. There, there are only two occasions when uh, the word for regeneration or rebirth is used, although the doctrine is much broader than that and talked about quite a lot, but only two occasions where the word is used. One is Matthew 19 and the other is here in Titus chapter 3. Yeah, so Titus chapter 3, and I'm going to read from verse 3, I think, um, and it's it's has so much stuff in it. Um, so Paul is writing to Titus, and he says, um, at one time we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Saviour appeared... He saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and the renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Saviour, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to stress these things so that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. These things are excellent and profitable to everyone. So there's lots of things there, Hmm. but it helps us to understand this uh, fantastic teaching, uh, Bible teaching, that Christianity is not just uh, a set of propositions or a set of doctrines or a set of truths, that we we simply just believe or don't believe, we just tick. But actually Christianity is about people becoming new beings, regenerated. Um, uh, you 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 get the sort of you get that phrase used in Doctor Who, don't you? When he when there's the next Doctor Who, he mm. basically dies and regenerates mm. into a, mm. a new a new Doctor, and that's the sort of concept. Uh, that we have here, but it's obviously not Doctor Who, uh, <laughs> science fiction. But it's, it, in other words, Christianity is this supernatural working of God, the Holy Spirit, in in changing us mm. and and changing our very constitution. We were uh, committed to these things. Mm. We mm. were living foolish lives. We were disobedient, deceived, and so forth. Um, but now. Mm. So I, 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 and I, I often uh, talk about a Christian being a but nower and a once waser. Mm. That's a definition. Once was this, but now I am this. And it's not just changing your intellectual beliefs, although that's very, very important. Mm. Um, and I don't want to belittle that, but it's actually a, a heart change, a substance change a spiritual rebirth, a regeneration or a renewal of the spirit as we we hear here. Mm. Yeah, and the startling thing about this passage is that um that that God ev- every member of the Trinity is involved in in our salvation. Uh, so he talks about the kindness and love of God. He talks about Jesus Christ our savior and that we're justified by his grace. Um, but the Holy Spirit's unique contribution to this salvation if you like is is the one who is poured out on us generously by God who comes to take up residence within us who makes us into new creatures and who washes us which is such a lovely phrase to be to be to be washed and cleansed of all of our guilt and filth and vileness and sin and uh, to be made new clean creatures in the Lord Mm. Um, that is his ministry and that that is what rebirth is it's like being totally born afresh born anew to begin a new a new christian life god life mm. um and that's the holy spirit's gift to us um so it's, it's a very wonderful thing isn't it and uh as is clear here as i say this is this is a this is a distinct work of god isn't it it's not yeah. something that we can 
do ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, it draws that distinction very clearly, doesn't it, in verse, in verse 5. Uh, he saved us not because of righteous things we've done. There was no way that we could cleanse ourselves. Mm. It required the gift of God in the Holy Spirit to to accomplish this in us. Mm. It says that in, in verse 3, you know, we, we were enslaved by these things. Mm. Um, someone who's enslaved can, can't save themselves. If you're in a cage, you can't get yourself out of it. If mm. you're um, a slave to someone, you need to be purchased out of it or sort of freed from it. Um and I think when you, when you look at, if you look at the world, uh, people don't wake up suddenly totally transformed on their own accord, do they? Mm. Um, someone who loves a certain way of life or a cert has, has an ambition to be a certain kind of person or to ach accomplish a certain kind of thing, they, they wake up every day enslaved by that desire and those desires. Um, and that's why it, it takes nothing short of the Trinity to... To, to save us from those things because we we all know I think as you grow older as a Christian um, there's no way you would have defeated those passions or those desires that rule over our lives um, I mean we fight against them now uh, but yet we desire not to follow them <laughs> and where on earth does that come from that's not come from ourselves yeah. that has to have come from yeah. God so it's interesting isn't it because that the message of Christianity is so absolutely different to what we're being told in our culture today, isn't yeah. it? Because basically, what all that you've said, I think people would say, "Oh, there you go. You're a repressive person. Yeah. Um, you're holding back your desires. Uh, if, if only you were free. Didn't talk about it as slavery. Talked about it as freedom." Mm -hmm. Uh, and it sounds all great, doesn't it? Our yep. desires. Oh, that's. I, I must go down that route. It will set me free. Yeah. Um, but it hasn't. It's produced a, uh, a, a, a um, an, an era and a generation of young people have all kinds of mental problems. Hmm. So it, it's it hasn't set us free. Yeah. Um, but we're we're saying we we need to be set free yep. by having a completely new nature. We need to be born again, as Jesus mm. used. Yeah. And it's it's amazing that a, the Christian um, doesn't desire the things that they once desired. Mm. So um, they they might be sort of tempted by certain uh, worldly things, but in their heart of hearts, they they desire to be ruled by God and not by those things. Yes, and that's why there's that famous conversation Paul has with himself. You know, he says, "I I, I don't do what I do want to do." And I do what I don't want to do. Mm. Um, that's the Christian life, which is totally different to the non-Christian who just does what they want. <laughs> yes, yeah, uh, because because you can have the battle because you are born again, can't you? Yes, because uh, you, because we are actually born again into the battle, right? Which is now with the sinful nature and and yep. so forth. But mm. you you can't battle if you're not born again. Yes, mm. you just follow the desires, yeah. as, you, as you said. I thought the other the other thing. Sorry, sorry. What did you want? No, to, no. Um, I mean, just going to one, uh, uh, John chapter one, um, because I think this is a very important thing that you, you were just talking about. Um, that it's not it's not by our own good works. It's mm. not by our own uh, 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 you know works of righteousness that yeah. that we're saved. We need to be born again. But it's also not not by um, anybody else bringing. The spirit, if you like. Uh, mm. So it, it it says in in uh, John chapter one. Yet to all who uh, did receive him, that's Jesus. So those who believe in his name, he be, be, he gave the right to become children of God. So that's the born again regeneration thing again. Children born not by natural descent, nor of human decision, nor a husband's will, but born of God. Mm. So. You're right that we can do nothing, but even as preachers, even as mm. ministers, mm. I can't make you born again. Mm. Only mm. God can do it. Mm. So there's, there's, all I am is a conveyor of the, uh, and you, you know, you are is a conveyor of the Bible truths. Without the Holy Spirit, yeah. mm. nothing will happen. Yes. So it's not down to me, or I'm a great evangelist yeah. in trying to save people. Mm. Yeah. And it's an essential. It's an essential thing, isn't it? Um, so, um, you know, this isn't just for super spiritual Christians uh, or for you know one one part of the Christian community. You, you know, Jesus actually goes on to say in John three, um, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. 
And then he goes on to say, you should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. Um, so it is, there is no salvation without this. Um, you know, we must be born again. This new God nature must be created within us. Otherwise, we will not enter into mm. the rule and the reign uh, of, of Christ. Um, and so it's a very necessary thing, isn't it, for, for that to happen? Um, and that passage is, is very interesting because uh, Jesus goes on to say, uh, compare, comparing this work of the Spirit to the wind. And he says in verse 8, the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. And so to be born again is um, in some ways a very difficult thing to see because mm. when somebody is born again, they don't wake up the next day and their teeth are brighter and they <laughs> suddenly wear different things. And there's not necessarily any visible change in them at all. Mm. Um, and yet the, the fruit of the Spirit's work will be seen in a transformed character, in in uh, you know all the things that Paul goes on about in Galatians five: love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, self control. You know the, these fruits of the spirit. Um, it, the mind will begin to be rewired and recreated, so that uh, things that we didn't like before, we now suddenly like. Things that we didn't understand about God, we now grasp. And um, and so, like the wind, although you can't actually see it, you know, you can see the rippling of the leaves and the mm. moving of the grass and the swaying of the flowers. You can see the fruit of it mm. all over the place, and that's the same with the work of the Spirit. We don't see it visibly but the fruit of a transformed life is ev is everywhere mm. um and i think that's what paul means probably in titus 3 when he says i want you to devote yourself to doing what is good in other words there is going to be a a, a sign of this washing which is going to be a devotion to holiness and godliness mm. and yeah so it's a powerful gift isn't it mm. in other words dynamic and transformative and it's um it's it's a gift for uh, every believer. It's not an intelligence thing, like we were saying at the start. Mm. Christianity mm. is not just like Scientology, and you move into f further levels of knowledge and understanding. But it it means the simplest people among us, and even little children, um, if they are regenerated, uh, you will see by the fruit of their lives how they how they um how their character is, how they love people and treat people, and um speak uh, as well hmm. um all, all of those things that's that's something that anyone can be can ha can be changed by you don't have to have a certain iq to be a mature christian mm. uh you have to um be washed by christ as we've said and imitate him in in the way that we act and it's also you can you can listen to a lecturer lecture about Christianity and they can know so much about the scriptures and about the history. But um, if their life doesn't match their lip, in a sense, um, they aren't really regenerated in the way that God wants us to be um, mm. because he wants us. Uh, I think about the the interaction Jesus has with the fig tree. He sees all the leaves on the fig tree, but there is no fruit there. Mm. And so he curses the fig tree um, because he doesn't want life without substance um or just sort of greenery leaves without the fruit um so so that, yeah so that, so it's it's for everyone it's not just for the intelligent among and, us and it's interesting uh, uh, the, the the point you uh, made uh, at, right at the beginning um uh, tom you know that the, 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 it's the whole trinity mm. involved in our salvation mm. and um so you know being born again makes us understand that jesus is the savior Right. So you can't be born again and think Muhammad is a savior, yeah, right. or yeah. you know that he's the savior. Yeah. And also being born again, the whole sort of child thing that God is now Father. Mm. So he's not just a God; he's not just a yep. a big sort of being. He's now our Father, and that's the delight, isn't it, of of being a child of of, mm. of God? We can call him Father, and we're calling Jesus our brother. Mm. our saviour brother our lord you mm. know mm. and um so the trinity is very very much mm. wrapped up in this it's not born again devoid of father no. and jesus mm. yeah mm. yeah good i mean another thing um worth touching on is that this uh this new birth comes through um the proclamation of the word of god i think that's another key theme in the new testament so uh, we've talked about the idea that it is for everyone, it is a gift of God, that the Trinity are all involved in it, that it's transformative, even if it's invisible. Um, but um, because the Word, and we've touched on this, I think probably right at the beginning of this series, is is the Holy Spirit Word, the Spirit-inspired, breathed-out Word, mm. then it shouldn't be su surprise us that the Spirit 
grants new life as the spirit word is is proclaimed mm. um and that is exactly the connection that peter draws in in 1 peter 1 uh and and verse 22 he says now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other love one another deeply from the heart for you have been born again not of perishable seed but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of god for all people are like grass and their glory is like the flowers of the field the grass withers and the flowers fall but the word of the lord endures forever uh, and so you can see very clearly, he says, that this, this gift of new birth comes through the living and enduring word of God. That it's as that word is preached that God empowers it, if you like, to create the life in us. Um, and so that's why we've got to be committed to preaching and teaching the Bible if we're going to see people um, mm. born again. Mm. And that too, you, you preached on Sunday and you had the analogy of a kind of platitude uh, read out to us, which doesn't have any effect on us at all. Mm. The difference with the scriptures, the scriptures aren't just platitudes. Um, I've seen a lot of people get quite excited about the boy, the fox and the horse. You know, you know that little uh, book? Mm, mm, it's, mm. it's just platitudes. I know people <laughs> really, really like it, but oh, at the end of the God. day, there is, there is no power in them to change you. Mm. Whereas the scriptures mm. aren't just platitudes. They're not just nice things to... Pr- I mean, sometimes people will... Remember my gr- my grandma's toilet downstairs. I don't know if this was fashionable in Christianity in like the seventies or eighties. But there's Depends like what you're gonna say. Well, yeah, yeah. There's like one of those massive posters that's like two oh, swans yes. making a love heart, and yes. then it's like the you know there's yeah. a psalm or uh, yeah, and you know that 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 is you you can platitudeize the scriptures, but there is power in them, mm, yeah. um, because it's it's whose word is it? That's the mm. question. It's yeah. the word of God, mm. and He is the one who who can affect us and change us through the power of his word. Mm. Um, so I thought, yeah, that's quite a mm. good illustration you used. Um, and gives us confidence as we preach as well. And should give us real um, a, a real incentive to come to church and be under teaching. Mm. Because what is happening as we sit under a sermon? Mm. Uh, the, the, the word of the Lord is being spoken... And God is working through that word to change us. Mm. So if we want to be changed and we want to grow in our faith, uh, then there's nothing better we can do than come and sit under his word. Mm. Because that is the means, as we've said, by which he's going to do this change in us. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah, I mean, and I wonder, just thinking about this whole doctrine, really, and, and particularly the age that we live in. And I think we touched on this in a previous one as well, but um, that we live in such a secular age um, where only what can be seen and tasted is, is real. And, um, and this, this doctrine, there is something, mystical may not be the right word, but there's something uh, that we can't quite kind of quantify about it and, and control in the same way. And I wonder sometimes if there can be an embarrassment in preaching it, you know, mm. you must be born again, because we've sort of fallen for the spirit of the age, which is as long as they just understand what I'm saying and assent to it mentally, then the work is done, mm. you know, and they, mm. and they go through the right number of courses and sit through all the sessions, and that's, but they're basically, we can kind of educate them into the kingdom, mm. can't we? Mm. Um, and as you said, we don't want to belittle the role of the mind no. in education, but um, I want to sometimes, if you, you know, it, I don't know, do you feel, am I onto no, anything No, we've got there? to, put, but well, I mm. mean, if you yeah. look at the great revivals, is uh, they're often preach this very term, you must be born again. Yeah. I mean, Whitfield, um, George Whitfield, back in the 18th century, w- that was his thing. He, you, know, you must be born again, you must mm. be born again. In fact, he preached it so much um, uh, that um, the one of the deacons from a church where he was preaching said, you know, why, why do you... Why, every night you've preached you must be born again. <laughs> why are you doing this? Cause, and he's, his answer was, because you must be born yeah, again. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, it, and it's absolutely right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the workings of God in our, in our very soul, isn't it? Mm. I mean, the, the again, you know, the, the, the opposite to the world that we're in, just to pick that up again, is that we're to look within and find ourselves. And once you've discovered yourself, you're, you'll be free. Mm. Well, according to the Bible, it's the exact opposite. When you look within, you'll see a sinful um, a wretch mm. of, of, a, of, a, of a being with a shriveled, dead soul. Mm. You, are, you are a dead man walking. You're mm. physically alive, but your soul is dead. And uh, when you understand that, 
then that's part of the working of the Spirit to cause us to cry out, I must be born again. I need God's work in my life. I, 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 I can't... I can't, I need a, well, I, I, I think we should call it a supernatural work yeah. of God. It's, it's or, or a reworking of what we, what we were created to be, a, a, a birth of the soul of the spirit that we may walk with God and know God. Mm. Um, so we go from death to life. Mm. Mm. And, and that's, that's where very often second what happens in churches is you you often have a sort of second generation third generation christian and so they sort of brought up with uh the, the first generation are those that are born again they've yeah. been they've been converted they've been changed they knew the spirit's work they bring up their children and those children haven't been born again, but they know all the truths. Right. But they still go to church because it's a sort of tradition. Mm -hmm. And then there's those children, that, and they think, oh, this is all hypocrisy, and it yeah. moves away yeah. like that. Yeah, so ever freshly, we've got to be preaching born again, yeah, don't yeah. we? Yeah. And it's not like uh, I used to think of that expression as I'm here. I am. I'm alive. I'm going in this direction. If I to be a Christian, I need to sort of hop off this rail and hop onto another rail. I need to be born into a different life. But as you were saying, your soul is dead, and therefore it's not moving from one life to another, mm. which I think some people see it as in their mind. It's oh well, you know, I'm I could go down this route, but I'm gonna go down this route instead as a Christian but it's yeah. it's you, your your soul is utterly completely dead you need to be born again not just into a different life but to live because you're not alive at the moment spiritually yes. Yes. you and and how do you become alive well you're you're born that's where life comes from yes. um and and that's totally different to just switching lanes yeah um it's uh you aren't in a lane <laughs> yes or or, e or or even just us preaching a moralism isn't it yes uh you know that here's christian standards and morals we know we know those those standards are good yeah. for humanity yeah but we don't just preach that because yes. you can't do that yeah um you know it's all very well for someone to say you need to be moral i can't be yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm dead there. I need to be alive. Yeah, um, made alive by by God. I mean, I, I loved uh, um, W. P. Nicholson was an old Irish uh, preacher, uh, and he always had the phrase that you can be uh, baptized, catechized, confirmed, <laughs> vaccinated, mm. and still not a Christian. You need to be born again, and mm. that's that's right. We can have people that go through all of the mm. systems of Christianity, mm. Mm. but actually they haven't really been regenerated, mm. yeah. been made alive, and that then, in the end, brings Christianity down. Mm. And I think that, yeah. that can explain some of the frustration that we all feel, both with ourselves, I guess, and, and with others, in that you know, when, when you present the Christian worldview and show how it really does... Um, just demolish uh, the wisdom of the age. Um, sometimes we wonder why isn't it why isn't it getting any purchase on them? You know why yeah. isn't it sort of instantly persuasive? Um, and and because it's not that simple, is it? You yeah. you can present cases as clearly and logically as you can and show the worldviews uh, of this age to, for what they are. And yet it because we need mm. the life of God in us in order to grasp. The, tr the truth of these things and in some ways that's why it, it you know it, it has to be our prayer all the time doesn't yeah. it because it is the very it, 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 if you can talk about an order of salvation mm. you know it is it is like the very first mm. thing that needs to happen because before a soul can even cry out mm. jesus you know save me they need to have had some sort of work within them to help them to see that Jesus is the one worth crying out to mm. and that he really could save me if I ask him to. Mm. And so that the new life is the very beginning of, of the Christian walk and, and is necessary from, from then on. So, um, you know, that's kind of should humble us in whenever we do preaching and teaching or evangelism of any kind, you mm. know, it's that, you know, I won't, they won't be one unless your spirit, um, comes comes to work in that and, and it's the holy spirit's work jesus says in 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 john 16 when he comes uh, he will uh, prove the world to be uh, in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment about sin because people do not believe in me about righteousness because i'm going to the father where they can see me no longer and about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned so the spirit's work 
isn't it? We need to be praying, Lord, but you know, mm. people are walking around, they don't know anything about righteousness, they don't know about sin, they don't know about judgment. Mm. Though all those words are un, un, you know, really unpopular words, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, they are. You know, mm. if you say sin, it's like, how dare you yeah. say that? If you mm. say about righteousness, who are you to push that purity onto us? Yeah. You know? And yet the world is totally confused. Yeah. I mean, just in the area of sex, yeah. you know, um, it was only a few years ago that there were massive campaigns against Christian groups that were doing something called purity, um, uh, where they were sort of asking people to be pure. Now, I didn't really like that campaign because it was a bit of a moralistic thing. Mm. But nevertheless, you know, they were saying, we want to keep ourselves uh, uh, for marriage in the area of sex, and they were putting rings on their fingers. And, yeah. and then student unions were campaigning against that. Oh, right. Yeah. This is wicked and, uh, you know, this sort of thing shouldn't be allowed on campuses, even mm. in this country. Um, and now we suddenly hear that 90% of girls at school uh, have had some kind of sexual... Sexting. Harassment. Or harassment. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and you say, well, look, look yeah. at this. Yeah. Um, and, mm. and so, uh, you know, we're in a world that's just totally doesn't understand sin, doesn't understand mm. the heart, mm. and that's why we've got to just preach this completely different worldview, mm. mm. which is you need something from outside of the, mm. um, this world, mm. uh, God's power to break into your life, to, to uh, uh, rebirth you so that mm. you would understand what life and, uh, and everything Absolutely. is about. And the yeah. world can offer nothing like this. I mean, we, we've been reflecting, a few of us here, on, um, on the Mumford and Sons story yeah. of a chap, Winston, Winston Marshall, I think his name was, who's recently decided to leave the band because he, he tweeted really just a thanks uh, to an author for writing a book that was critical of, the, of, the, of some of the far-left ideology. And um, people interpreted that on Twitter to mean that he was a sort of fascist who was supporting the far right, which is just <laughs> ludicrous because his own family has suffered terribly at the hands of fascism. I think he said 13 members of his family uh, were killed during the Holocaust. Um, mm. and, and so to call him a fascist... <laughs> Um, yeah. is just wild and quite hurtful, really. Um, and he was talking about, you know, he talks about it as a sin to sort of tweet a thanks for that book on Twitter. But then he said he committed the in the next sin, which was to say sorry. Mm. Yeah. And he said the reason that's a sin on Twitter is because all it does is confirm your guilt in everybody's yes. eyes. Oh, right. They don't forgive you. <laughs> they just say, ah, oh, yes, he really is a fascist. Yeah. Look, um, and now we can cancel him and his band and, and everybody else. So... Um, and so you can't find forgiveness uh, in the world. In fact, it's a sin to say sorry um, because it just confirms you. And yet the Holy Spirit, uh, we're told in Titus 3, brings a washing and a renewal. Um, and so it's more, even more than just a legal forgiveness. It's not someone saying, you did this wrong, I forgive you. It's the Spirit of God coming to actually cleanse old stains mm. of guilt and to make you a new person again. Um, and that's why, you know, we, we, we do say, like, we, you're not unrealistic about some of the scars that can be present and may be present with us forever. But um, if somebody has got a very checkered or immoral um, sexual past, you know, it's like when they're born again. Uh, we, we've talked before, when they're born again, it's like they are made virgins again. Yeah, they they, they really have been, like, washed and cleansed and made new. Again, not being naive about, you know, this world and stuff, but that is true, isn't it? That mm. this that God provides a sort of forgiveness and cleansing that is just and nowhere. I, th in I the think world. that washing um, is, is it is lovely, isn't it? Because we all know what it's like to, you know, when when, when you feel dirty to to um, to wash. It's mm. such a it's, it's, it's it feels so refreshing, doesn't it? Mm. I mean, uh, you know, having a shower and soaping and cleaning, mm. you, you feel really genuinely refreshed and invigorated, and that's exactly what's going on mm. I, I find it hard to read those verses in in Titus without thinking uh, quite um, emotionally actually about a young girl that I met outside a church building once and she was 13 and she was living with an older bloke at, at the time and had walked out on school and all that sort of stuff and um, uh, she was just sitting outside this church building and I came out and started talking to her and uh, she then came to a Bible study and we were doing Titus. Mm. 
Hmm. Uh, and you thought, well, why should come to this one? <laughs> you know, why can't, why can't we be doing gospel. the gospel <laughs> yeah. or something? And it was this passage. And she heard the word washing. I was only 13, but she had a, you know. Um, and uh, it absolutely changed her. Mm. And she became a Christian and um, uh, a follower of Christ. And she was washed by the word. And it was interesting because I had to ring the headmaster up of her school because she had, she'd left and, and said, look, she wants to come back. She wants to do education. And he mm. said, what on earth are you talking about? Mm. I've never heard anything like this. Mm. When girls are like that, they don't come back. Mm. And I said, no, she wants to come back. She wants to have an education. And he said, of course, this is amazing. I've never heard mm. anything like this. And then she said to the headmaster, I'll only come back. And he said, oh, okay. If I can go to hear the word of God <laughs> at the university mm. uh, that's preached every, every Wednesday or whenever <laughs> wow. it was. And he yeah. said, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and it was just an amazing thing. And that girl's Brilliant. now... Uh, pastor's wife and yeah. so forth and it, the it, phrase washing wasn't yeah it? It there was the phrase like, washing yeah yeah, yeah. 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 But it's such a rare thing in the world isn't it it's mm. such a beautiful idea um like as we've discussed is not really an option because you'll get cancelled you'll get you'll get sort of run out of town um yeah it's a wonderful it's a wonderful invitation isn't it mm. and the grace in that isn't it mm. come to god and he'll wash you not come to god and he'll just rip your head off yeah yeah or yeah. cancel you he yeah. doesn't want to do that yeah mm. yeah that's why i would jesus says if if i don't wash you you won't be clean i yeah. think when he's trying to wash his disciples feet and they're protesting yeah. and saying you shouldn't be on the floor <laughs> yeah and then he says, no. "Unless I wash you, you'll never be yeah. clean." And Peter's like, "Well, wash yeah. not just my feet, but wash all <laughs> of me." Head, everything, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wonderful, isn't it? Well, uh, you know, if you're listening in and you, you know, you have been for a while, perhaps, and you wouldn't call yourself a Christian, you know, we want to echo the words of Jesus to you. You must be born again. You can be born again if you come to the Savior. Or, and, or you uh, actually might. Sorry, you might call yourself a Christian mm. because morally and yes, mm. intellectually. Yeah. Yeah. But are you born again? Yeah. 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 Brilliant. And uh, for those of us who already know and love the Lord, we need to keep depending on the Spirit, don't we, for, every, for everything. So thank you for joining us. And um, uh, do, do join us again next week. Uh, we'll be looking at the letter S. And uh, cornerstonechurchkingston.org is the place to go for other resources and uh, sermons. Some of the Sometimes we mention sermons in, in these discussions, and you can find those on the website. And uh, do check out our YouTube channels as, as well. <laughs>